Bro, you stole my sesh! Welcome to Cross Site Scripting. What is going on, guys? Today we're going to be talking about cross site scripting. Now, there's a few clients that I've had that don't really understand the impact of cross site scripting and don't really feel that it's a massive issue in web applications. Now, I'm here to tell you today that it is, and I'm going to show you a bit of a tutorial of how to do it. So, firstly, what is cross site scripting? Well, it's an injection based attack, usually using JavaScript, where it, it is what it is on the tin. You inject JavaScript into fields on a web application. So it could be a comment section, it could be a forum where you're you're posting something to the forum, it could even be uh, on a My Account page where you change your name, you could put some code into where you would put my name Luke or your name Bill. So anyway, let's get into the actual web application here. So I've made a vulnerable application that has a few features to try and show you a bit of cross-site scripting. So let's just run through this. Um, so I can change my welcome name, so Dave, I can change that here. My email, this this is my email, I can change my email with this box. And we've also got a get parameter called swag. And in that we have testing string do not use. And anything you put in here then reflects down to here. So if I just put a load of random words, that's going to get reflected down to here. So these are a few inputs that we can use to try and go about our cross-site scripting attack. So. There's two main methods of cross-site scripting. You've got stored and you've got reflected. Now, stored, it is what it is. It's literally storing script on the server so it's always run. So let's take my name Dave at the moment. If I change my welcome name to a very simple JavaScript, so we've got script, alert one, script. All that's going to do is pop up an alert with the number one in it. So if I run that, it pops up. And as you can see, Dave is now gone because it's replaced Dave with a script. So this shouldn't happen in web applications because, well, you shouldn't be able to run code within somebody else's web application. Um, and so this is, a, this is an example of stored cross-site scripting because every time I come back to this page, that's always going to run. So if I just get rid of that now, ooh, let's get rid of that now and put Dave back into there, that's not going to run anymore because that's no longer stored. Reflected is a bit different. So reflected is never stored on the web server and it's totally client side. So in this example, we've got the get parameter swag. If we were then to put in the same thing, we can cross an XSS because where this script is, is now down here where the original random wording was. So that's just replaced that with a script. So when you're looking for cross-site scripting, it's all about trying to find different places that you can inject scripts and make them run. So to mitigate against this, they would just need to strip the tags. So for example, they could strip script or script um, or alert one. Many different JavaScript terms, they could blacklist so you can't run things. That's not always the best way to go about things and I'm going to show you why. So we've got a search box here. I just put something random in and that goes to a get parameter called searcher. So if I was to do the same thing again and put script in here. So again, we've got the simple script, alert one script. Oh, didn't run. That's because with this one, I've made it so I'm uh, blacklisting the, cert, uh, the script. So when I put something in a search, my code is looking for that tag. And if it finds that tag, it won't run it. It won't run that search term. This is why it's not good. So if I was to not use script and I was to use something else such as SVG, so SVG onload, oh look, I've, I've made another pop-up. SVG onload is loading a document and then I've just added some JavaScript to that. So I'm not using a, uh, a script tag. Now you're probably thinking, okay, that's cool. You've, you've made a pop-up. Where is the impact to that? And uh, yeah, you'd be right. Where is the impact to a pop-up? Most web applications run on cookies. So when you've got a user, you usually got cookies. And that's how the whole kind of sessions work. So as you can see here, I've got a session ID called php sesh ID. And this is the, the value of that. 
So this, this value here relates to the user I'm logged in, which is Dave. And as an attacker, you want to try and attack another user. So say if someone's logged in as Bill, you want to try and get this token so you can use it. So if you can steal Bill's token and you edit and you paste that into your token, you reload, you're going to be logged in as Bill and you don't need his password. Now, how can you do that with cross-site scripting? Well, actually, pretty easily. So what I've got here, this is my setup. I've got a server, which has died, so I'm going to have to reload that. So I'm on my server now. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to set up a listener. So using a program called Netcat. And I'm going to put the V flag, which is listen verbosely. Because anything I'm sending to this, I want to see. L is listen. P is which port I want to put it on. I'm going to put it on port 447. So that's now listening on port 447. So anything that gets sent to this server on port 447 now, it's going to show me with the V, the verbose. Now, with the cross-site scripting, here's one I made earlier. What this is, script tags. You can do this with the SVG if you want, but I'm going to use script tags here. So now this JavaScript is going to try and load an image from my server, which is this IP address, on port 447, which is what I just opened here. And it's going to send the cookies to that port. So to put this into context view, let's put this into the, the, the URL here. Now this, this get URL, you could send that to anyone. So in our attack scenario here, we're sending this to Bill. So we're going to go on Skype, we're going to like, hey Bill, just hey, here's this URL, check it out. And if he's logged into this application and he runs this URL with this script in, it's going to send his cookies to my server. So I'm not going to bother logging in as Bill, I'm going to do it as Dave, but you, you'll see, you'll see how this works. So if you if keep an eye on this screen, I'm listening on 447, it's sending to my IP address here on 447. So once I press enter, it's going to send me my own cookies, but keep in mind that, you know, if you send this to Bill, it will send me his cookies. And of course, it did not work. Why did that not work? Two hours later. Because we do not have a script here. Syntax is very important, guys. There we go. So what we've got here, if we look at my cookie manager, we've got Dave's encoded test cookie, which is what's here. We've got an admin cookie which is here, but most importantly, we've got a PHP Sesh ID cookie, which is here. So what we can do is we can take that cookie, edit, copy it into here, save it, reload the page, and if, if this was Bill, once you reload the page, you are then Bill. So using a cross-site scripting attack there, reflected cross-site scripting, you've effectively taken over someone's account just by sending them a URL. That's why cross-site scripting is so dangerous. I mean, it's a bit harder for stored because obviously in, in this example, it's just going to be you seeing this page. But if you're on a forum, for example, and you did this on a forum, imagine how many session cookies you're going to be sent through your listener. You know, if you've got a forum with hundreds of people on and you've posted that in a comment, you've posted send me your cookies in a comment, you know, you're going to get a lot of people, a lot of people. And that's very, very dangerous. And that's the impact of cross-site scripting. So I hope you've learned something here. I hope you've learned the impact of cross-site scripting. I hope you've learned a little bit of how to inject scripts and where you can inject scripts. And yeah, this has been my tutorial on cross-site scripting. Hope you watch again. Cheers, guys.